Hi all, Carl here. We're standing in front of the Hunter Power Plant in Emory County, Utah, which is a 1.5 gigawatt power plant powered by coal. Now we're here to talk about the transference of fossil-based power to renewable wind and solar. In the past 20 years, wind and solar has been the hot topic as a solution to replace fossil-based power generation. Due to the national and federal funding programs in support of these renewable projects, the media support and relentless attacks against conventional fossil-based power generation, roughly 3,300 generating power plants totaling 115 gigawatts of capacity have been retired or closed across the United States since the year 2000. This also includes the closure of nuclear power plants as well. The stakes in our rapidly expanding energy landscape could not be any higher. From national security to minimizing climate change, to the immediate and ever-growing energy needs of billions of people and real-world cost. The consequences of getting the energy equation wrong could not be any more dire. At Element One, we have a unique and expanded viewpoint combined with an inherent desire to expose the facts. And we look at that rapidly changing energy landscape. We realize that as a society, we are confusing tools with solutions. In simple terms, a solution is an answer to a problem whereas a tool is something that helps you to do a particular activity or task, but does nothing to resolve the real problem. For example, a person hard of hearing will use a hearing aid to help them hear better, but that does nothing to alleviate the real problem of degenerative hearing loss. Wind and solar are excellent tools, but are not, as the math proves out, viable solutions to our global energy and climate crisis. In discussing power generation and climate change, according to some scientists, environmentalists, government divisions, and renewable energy advocates, fossil-based power generation is the main culprit at the root of environmental deterioration. From their perspective, the only solution available is to shut down all power plants to stop the CO2 emissions being generated by these facilities and to replace these power plants with wind and solar and completely eliminating fossil-based resources for power generation in pursuit of zero emissions. This strategy is already failing on a massive scale. And when we run the numbers, the future holds more of a catastrophic energy failure if we follow this narrow world vision of renewable energy as a solution instead of as a tool. The energy equation is really the beating heart of our modern civilization. At Element One Technologies, we decided to take a deeper dive into this future energy blueprint by exposing some of the math behind the proposed energy equation of converting fossil-based power plants to renewable sources. Not so much in the sense of the impact of reducing carbon emissions in this video, but that's in our next video. In this one, we take a deeper dive into the land usage and cost associated with replacing fossil-based power plant with the tools like wind and solar. We hope you find this video informative, educational, and eye-opening. Until the next time, have a great day and look for the next video. This video, Power Generation by the Numbers, is an example of converting a conventional base load one gigawatt coal-fired power plant to intermittent renewable wind and solar. Even though built in the 70s, in 2020 dollars, this same power plant would cost $2 billion and only require 640 square acres, or roughly one square mile of land. This amount of power output could supply the energy needs of 750,000 homes while operating at full capacity of 85% throughout the year, only cycling down for scheduled maintenance, upkeep, and meeting the highs and lows of energy demand and the rare emergency shutdown. In this example, we are presenting a common four megawatt wind turbine in this energy equivalent equation. The turbine is based on present day cost of 1.3 million per megawatt, giving us an average total of $5.2 million per each turbine. To assess a 50-50 split between wind and solar output equivalent of our one gigawatt power plant, we would need 125 four megawatt wind turbines. Typically, wind farms operate at a 42% capacity factor during the course of the year so we have to double the amount of land and wind turbines to 250 wind turbines. A four megawatt wind turbine has a rotor diameter of 140 meters. To determine the spacing between turbines, we are using the industry standard of seven rotor diameters per column distance between wind turbines, or 980 meters, 
to maximize efficiency and reduce wind turbulence created by a massive spinning rotor behind each wind turbine while adding in the row spacing of five times rotor diameters or 700 meters with a total of 686,000 square meters, in other words, three quarters of a square kilometer. According to an in-depth report by NREL, a typical four megawatt wind turbine would require an average of one square kilometer of land, considering turbine spacing, infrastructure, and land topography. Since we are using wind and solar in a 50-50 split to equate to a one gigawatt output without any backup, we need 250 wind turbines that consume 155.6 square acres each. Accumulatively, that gives us 10 columns and 12 rows totaling 30.4 square miles at a cost of 650 million. Considering the average wind farm capacity of 40%, we need to multiply that area by two, total 500 megawatts of nameplate capacity output. This also doubles the cost from 650 million to 1.3 billion, requiring a total mass consumed of 62 square miles or 100 square kilometers. To get a realistic look at this land mass equation at scale, we overlay this area in the Salt Lake Valley. If we use 100% wind turbines to replace the one gigawatt power output without any storage backup, it would double to 124 square miles compared to the one square mile of land used for the one gigawatt power plant. Now we configure the 50% solar equivalent of 500 megawatts. Industry standard claims 50 megawatts requires 250 square acres. In other words, five acres per megawatt. Solar farms operate on a 20% capacity factor average throughout the year in many sun zones and up to 30% in sun zones further south like in Arizona. A 50 megawatt solar farm would cost $65 million. We need to multiply 50 megawatts times 10 to equate to the 500 megawatts of the power equivalent equation above, which translates into 2,500 square acres at a cost of 650 million and consumes four square miles of land mass. With the capacity factor figured into the equation, we need to use a capacity of 5x from 500 megawatts to 500 megawatts and increase the land mass total as well to 20 square miles at a cost of $3.25 billion. This solar farm is now $1.25 billion over the original $2 billion cost of the entire one gigawatt power plant. Now combining wind and solar in a mix of 50-50 to equate to the power output of our one gigawatt power plant, it tells a different story. Considering first the 20% capacity factor of solar and then calculating the 42% capacity factor of wind turbines, let's look at the accumulative land required to replace this one gigawatt power plant, considering 500 megawatts of solar and 500 megawatts of wind turbines. We arrive at 82 square miles of land consumed. Doing a scale overlay of the Salt Lake Valley again clearly shows the scale of the land consumed at the cost of $4.5 billion. That total amount is equivalent to two one gigawatt power plants in cost and power output. Now let's look at an example of real world power consumption and demand. California uses 33 gigawatts per year of nameplate capacity. Considering our one gigawatt power equivalent to 124 square miles of wind turbines and expand that to 33 gigawatts, it would require 4,092 square miles of California landscape or 2.6 million square acres. To consider the previous 50-50 wind solar split energy equivalency, replacing the 33 gigawatts of California presently consumes, it would require 2,706 square miles. The state of California has claimed to be needing 20 gigawatts of new renewable power generation by 2050, giving a total of 53 gigawatts. Converting this to wind and solar equates to 4,346 square miles or 6,572 square miles of just wind turbines. This is equivalent to 5% of the entire landmass of California. So you see, renewable energy, chiefly wind and solar, 
has a big downside of land consumed per unit produced and the cost increase compared to the same equivalent of power output of conventional power plants. If that money were spent on converting existing power plants to emission-free facilities, we'd be reaching zero emissions long before 2050 while saving millions of acres of land and billions of dollars planned for wind and solar. The world operates on a 24-7, 365 energy consumption, and we consume vast amounts of products that are created from fossil fuels, from plastic to tires, to the roads we drive on, to hundreds of household items like lipstick, dyes, deodorant, to surfboards, and so much more. Fossil-based consumer items are well integrated into our modern life, and they are here to stay for the foreseeable future. Renewable energy from the sun and wind will not create these products that are carbon-based, just as these energy resources can only operate if the sun is shining and if the wind is blowing. In most cases, these weather-dependent restrictions don't happen with fossil-based power. We have only to look at Europe and California to see what happens when tools are confused with solutions. And then there's this abstract underlying assumption, the future look of the energy equation. The logic goes something like this. The only way to correct our increasingly erratic weather is to rely 100% on our increasingly erratic weather to fix the climate problem. But this is backward thinking. We cannot rely on technology that is reliant on the weather to correct the weather. You see, tools are only good for certain tasks. If your car has a flat tire, for example, you can pump in some pressurized fix-a-flat that will temporarily make the car drivable. But the solution is to fix or replace the tire. Nobody is going to think that a viable solution to a flat tire is to throw away the car and then build a new car that only works when the sun shines. Yet that's exactly where we are in our backward forward thinking about energy. That's where the real problem is and we need to focus on those solutions. There are, however, elegant timing and cost-effective solutions that we can easily implement right now and eliminate carbon emissions within just a few short years instead of decades. The real issue is not the fossil-based feedstocks that go into these power plants, but it's the emissions coming out of the power plant going into the atmosphere, just like the combustion engine. It's not the gasoline that is the culprit, it's the emissions from the combustion gasoline. The bottom line is this, Element One technologies can turn an existing coal or gas-fired power plant into an emission-free control facility while providing thousands of new jobs, products, and even 100% organic food. By combining all the tools at our disposal, we can create a very real, sustainable, clean energy solution that can eliminate all global greenhouse emissions and carbon dioxide while providing so much more than mere electrons. And we can do this in just a few short years. Sustainable, clean energy, 24-7, 365, the world over. And that is a solution we can all live with. How can we do that? By re-envisioning what a power plant can really be. Right now, power plants make electrons. That's it. But they can be so much more. What was once part of the problem now becomes part of a larger solution with a little innovation, out of the box thinking thrown in. We call these new power plants energy super centers, and we can discuss how we can do this in a later video.